I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about piles and fissures. We're actually going to focus more on anal fissures today, but every a lot of people think that piles and fissures are both the same thing. Now fissures, anal fissures, is something that millions of people across the world suffer from. A lot of people wait until it's too late because they're shy. They determine that they have a little lump or a skin tag, you know, uh, from their anal region. Or they have this constant burning and a lot of people feel shy to discuss it with their parents or with their partners and then their doctors. And they go on suffering with this until it becomes so bad that sometimes you have to go in for surgery. At the same time, there are a lot of people who prescribe surgery immediately without you having made dietary changes and lifestyle changes. And in most cases, in most, not all cases, your doctor will decide that. Surgery can be avoided. Let's understand right now. Today we're talking about anal fissures. Piles are when the veins in the anal region get inflamed. And that can also seem to be a little bit bulky. You may have something like a skin tag. Those are piles. But what are anal fissures? When there are cuts, there are small cuts along the anal region. These small cuts can get bloody. Sometimes these small cuts can be deep because of constant movement through physical exercise, walking and sitting, as well as constipation or loose motions. And those cuts can get deeper and deeper, and in severe cases, it can even expose some of the muscle tissue. So there could be a crack in the skin, and there could be bleeding. Now these are some of the symptoms. There could be a skin tag. A skin tag is like a piece of skin that may hang out. It may actually hang out, or you could feel it when you put your finger towards the inner part or the rim of your anus. It could be a lump, it could be bloody, sometimes it could burn, and sometimes it could itch. These are symptoms. Get it checked immediately because prevention is always better than kill. Now what causes this? Everyone thinks that it's only constipation that causes fissures. Yes, in most cases, it's constipation. The stool becomes hard and you try to push that out. So the straining and the hard stool, think about it. The anal region is very delicate, delicate tissues. So if you try to push something hard through it, it causes an abrasion or those little cuts and those little cracks. And now that becomes bloody. Anything that is exposed to bacteria, what comes out of your anus are your stools, which contain bacteria, they contain germs and all of that stuff. Now, that can get into the little crack and it can become septic it can become bloody. And that's why sometimes your doctor may put you on antibiotics to reduce the infection, especially if it becomes pussy, and in some cases through surgery if it's unable to heal on its own. So constipation is a big problem. Constipation is a huge problem. Most people live with it. It's not just piles and it's not just fissures. It's everything, your skin, your hair, your immune system. You know, just imagine this when you're constipated, how bad it is. And I'm not trying to induce fear, I'm trying to inspire you that it's not okay to be constipated. A lot of people think it's okay, they take more and more laxatives, but you need to understand that if I need a laxative to pass out a motion, and I can't do it without a laxative, what is my body trying to tell me to fix, which I'm just covering up with a band-aid, which is a laxative? I don't have a problem with a laxative, take it, it'll make it easier, but you can't be on it for a lifetime like most people. So what happens is, our gut, it is trying to tell you that something is wrong with your gut. It could start right from your digestive system to your small intestine to your large intestine and the rectum region. It could be lack of water, it could be lack of fluids, it could be lack of fiber. In some cases, it could be too much of fiber because of too much of fiber will also cause irritation to your gut. Sometimes it could be the formation of tumors that is preventing you from passing emotion and that's why your doctor may ask you to get a scan done. Sometimes it could be polyps. So it could be various, various things, but constipation is a signal to you that, hey, the drain is blocked, fix it. What would you do if your bathroom drain was blocked? Would you just leave it? Would you just leave it? No, you would fix it, because what happens if you leave it, okay? All of the dirt and all of the dirty water will now come up and it can't drain, and then it'll start to fill up your bathroom and it'll start to clog the other drains and it'll become a mess. The same thing in the human body. Just imagine poop, okay? The simple test is after you poop, would you put your hand in the pot and take out the poop and play around with it? No, you wouldn't. Why? Because it's yucky. It's disgusting. Now imagine keeping that in your system for a long period of time. What is happening when you keep that waste that you want like to touch, no one does, and play around with in, in your system? It becomes gassy. It starts to ferment. It starts to damage the inner walls of your large intestine where absorption of toxins and bacteria can get into your blood, leading to an autoimmune condition, leading to an infection, leading to so many issues. It's as simple as that. That's why drains are meant to pass rubbish out of it. 
If it's blocked, it needs to be fixed as quickly as possible. So coming back to fissures, constipation is one of the major causes. People sometimes are not constipated. They're in a hurry to pass out a stool. They're in a hurry, they're distracted, and they just sit on the pot and they try to push out and push out. Sometimes it's not time for you to go yet. You can't keep changing your bathroom times every single day according to your convenience. Oh, today I'm busy, I have a meeting, let me skip my poop time. And tomorrow I'm free, let me poop right now. Everything works with a rhythm. That's why sometimes to correct your bowel movement, it's also sitting on the pot at the same time every day. The same way you retrain your body to sleep, you retrain your body to eat at the same time, your biorhythm of your colon is also important. You sit and you poop at the same time without hurrying up. The second mistake is a lot of people like to sit on the pot for a long time. Go through their mobile phones, read books, read newspapers. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to sit, pass a motion, and that's it. Again, it's with your mind. So a lot of people think that, oh, I'll take half an hour on the pot. And you have to understand everything works with mind and body. Your mind should realize that when Luke sits on the pot, it's time for him to pass a motion. Okay, it works like that. But if it's that, oh, Luke sits on the pod and he takes out his mobile phone and he goes through it and he reads the newspaper and all of that stuff, everything works with anchors. It's the same thing. Someone rings the bell means someone has to go and open the door. Okay, it's lunchtime, your, heart, your stomach starts grumbling, you, you start producing stomach acids, you know it's time for you to sit and eat. It's the same thing with your poop. Get your poop time and your poop rhythms right. So constipation is one. If you, if you want to learn how, if you're severely constipated, you can go through our videos on constipation as well. It's worth solving your constipation problem. Diarrhea, the same thing. If you have constant loose motions, like people with IBS, you're passing many motions in a day, it is also creating abrasion in your anal region. So imagine, after you pass a motion and there's already a cut in your anal region, but you're passing five to six in a day, it's causing more and more inflammation, which is why it's important to handle IBS, the same thing with colitis, the same thing with Crohn's. All of these are gut issues with inflammation as the main cause. You have to reduce inflammation at a gut level in order to improve your fissures. It's as simple as that. So uh, the next point was, yeah, tight muscles. Okay, if your anal muscles are constantly tight, which is why exercise is so important for us, Kegel exercise, hip flow exercises, exercises that work with your pelvic, you know, your pelvic flow region, your hip flexors, your thigh muscles, your glutes, your groin area, which is why yoga and exercise are so important. Although, if you suffer from a lot of fissures, be careful of certain movements, because sometimes the fissures get worse when you move, like when you're doing a squat, or you're doing lunges, and it can create more movement of your, of your skin against the cut, the anal region against the cut. So you want to be careful of specific exercises as well. There are many, many yoga asanas that actually open up the entire anal region. And it's very important for us to open it up to allow air to pass through, movement in the muscles, because all of that generates healing of the cut that you have. Sitting too long. Do not sit in a place too long if you have fissures. It'll make it worse and it'll make it more painful. So it's important to move around, be active. Okay, anal sex. We have to talk about this topic because a lot of people don't want to talk about it unless they're asked about it. If you have fissures and if you have piles and if you engage in anal sex, please understand you're we're doing more destruction, more destruction to your system. We've known people who have had to go in for immediate surgeries after that because of the amount of thrust and the amount of abrasion and infection that it can create. So you want to be mindful of that. Now, what can we do if you have fissures? Okay, there's a cut. The cut needs to heal. If it doesn't get time to heal, the cut gets deeper and deeper or more septic. So number one, if you are constipated, by the time you change your diet and add the fiber, you can use stool softener. So if your doctor has given you a laxative or a stool softener, use it. I would rather you pass a motion than keep it in and struggle to pass it out and create more abrasion against those cuts. So use it. Use it with an intention that, fine, I'm using the laxative or a stool softener as a crutch right now because I have a problem that I don't want to get worse. But while you're taking that, improve your diet. Fiber. There's insoluble fiber and there is soluble fiber. Just keep a balanced diet. Sometimes your doctor or your nutritionist may prescribe fiber supplements and that can work beautifully. But if you have a case of colitis or Crohn's or you have IBS where a little bit of fiber creates more irritation, then you know that you have to go slower or lower on fiber. So your doctor or your nutritionist will work with a combination of soluble or insoluble fiber that works best for you. So again, a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, your protein, all together will give you sufficient 
fiber for your bowels to work the right way. Do not overdo it on fiber, do not underdo it on fiber. We have trifla. Trifla powder is beautiful. It works for some people, it doesn't work for some people, but you lose nothing by trying it. Having a teaspoon of trifla in the morning with a little bit of pure honey, a little bit of pure ghee works for most people. Having plain trifla with water at night can also work. But again, make an informed decision. Everyone is different bio-individuality. Because trifla doesn't work just as a laxative. It also helps you to repair the gut, populate the gut microbiome. See, if you have a problem in the rectum region, you have a problem in the large intestine, it starts from the way you eat. A lot of people, by just slowing down from fast eating to chewing their food, say, hey, look, my constipation is getting better. My emotions are getting well formed. They're more full. They're more consistent. They're coming out very, very easily because digestion starts in the mouth. It's as simple as that. That brings me to my next point. If you have low stomach acid, you're unable to break down most proteins in your food. You have indigestion. And then partly digested food, your small intestines need to take the brunt of it. And that passes on to the large intestines and into your rectum region. So digestion is everything. It starts from the way you eat right up to your rectal region. And you need to work on the whole system, not just laxatives and stool softness. A lot of people abuse laxatives. They don't want to make an effort to correct their bowel movements or their diet, so they take laxatives. Let me tell you, it's doing more damage to you in the long run. Very few people medically will have to have laxatives every day. Like people who have gone through colorectal surgeries or cancers or they have a part of their rectum removed. For everyone else, you're just being lazy. You're not looking for the root cause. You're not looking at changing your lifestyle. And the more laxatives you take, guess what? It just doesn't push out your stool. It also pushes out all of the good stuff. That's why people then have dysbiosis. They have gut dysbiosis. They have problems with their microbiome. They have bloating all the time. They're passing out emotion, but they're having bloating or acidity or weight gain, or changes in their skin, acne, pigmentation, dull hair, thinning hair, dull skin, all related to your gut. So there are no shortcuts. You can't use a laxative more than the prescribed time. Please understand that. There are certain natural foods that work like laxatives, like when you have a glass of carrot juice with a little bit of olive oil, when you have your medicated ghee in the morning, when you have cucumber, and a whole load of vegetables mixed in a bowl that we call salad. That's good fiber for you. If it's raw and it irritates you, steam it. Have it partly cooked. That is also still good fiber because fiber doesn't get destroyed with heat. So fluids, if you're dehydrated, you are constipated. As simple as that. As simple as that. You know, some of the easiest money I've made in my career are people who have taken appointments with constipation, severe constipation. When I look at their water intake, it's two glasses of water. Tell them to have nine to 10 to 12 glasses of water in a week and get back, constipation disappear. Sometimes it's as simple as that. Easy money, my luck. The next thing is, what can you apply? Okay, you will be given creams. Sometimes you'll be given steroidal creams. Coconut oil, pure coconut oil. Put it on your finger and put your finger in the anal region where you have the cut and apply it. Apply it before you sleep at night. Apply it in the morning before you pass a motion. Apply it three to four times in a day. Yep, once you have oil up your anus, it will feel a little bit funny while you walk, but you'll get used to the feeling. And if you don't, if coconut oil doesn't work for you, even PO ghee. You can use PO ghee in your anal region. It works two ways. It works two ways. It's highly anti-inflammatory in nature, and number two, it works as a lubrication. Some people, they pass a motion. The, 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 the start of the motion is very hard. The rest of it is well-formed and very easy to flow out. The lubrication is sometimes required when the muscles get a little bit too tight. But the idea is you want to provide the lubrication so even if you're slightly constipated, the hard stool coming out will just flow through because of the lubrication and it will not upset the already existing fissure. You can try that. Hot baths are also great. So you can do this. Hot water, I mean, it shouldn't burn you. Okay, you can put Epsom salt in that water in a bucket and slowly lower yourself, squat into the water. So the anal region opens up a little bit and you have a little bit of heat and warm water touching the fissure, which can be excellent for you. Okay, so that's something that you can do as well. A simple diet. When you have problems with your gut, the first thing you need to do is move to a simple diet. Stop your junk, stop your sugar, stop your dairy, stop your gluten. Number one, have kitchenies, semi-soft foods, move back to your fruits and vegetables. Let the gut relax, let inflammation come down. And then as your gut starts to get stronger and stronger, you can start reintroducing some of the other foods that you could not take before. When you have a fissure, and if you cannot tolerate spicy foods, stay away from spicy food. It makes you more acidic and the burning sensation in the fissure will be more unbearable. Some of the superfoods when it comes to your fissures are carrots, walnuts, green tea, 
you know, and one of the most important pieces of advice is eat on time. There is a biorhythm in your body. When you eat, there's a signal for you to poop. Maybe a couple of hours later, everything works with signaling. I eat a meal, goes on to my intestine, okay? I absorb all my vitamins, my minerals, my proteins, my macros, the waste moves down. Okay, so digestion happened and now elimination has to happen. That is a biorhythm. I don't care if you're a billionaire, a millionaire, whether you're a primist or how busy you are. It's the same for everyone. There is a biorhythm. If you respect that, you have good health. You abuse it, you have disharmony and you have disease. It's as simple as that. There is no debate around that. Your body may adapt to your irregular cycles for a while because the body is it works on the principle of survival and adaptation. But for a while, you push it out of that set point, you will have huge problems, okay? So that's it. When your babies have this problem of fissures, they could be constipated, follow the same protocol, but change nappies. A lot of babies have nappy rashes that actually make the fissures worse. So you wanna change their nappies or their pampers on time. Do not allow waste to stay in their diapers for a long period of time. For everyone else, it's as simple as that. You've understood the basics of fissures. You don't have to complicate it. This is what is happening in your system, and these are the ways that you've got to figure out how to do it. Now, let me end with the emotional part. There is always an emotion with every condition in the human body. People who have reoccurrent fissures all the time, no matter what they do, look at what emotion is deep within you. What are you holding on to that your body has to let out? Okay, when there's constipation, sometimes we're holding on to negative emotions. We don't want to let go. We're rigid. We do not want to let go. All of that is connected with your gut health, your constipation, and all of that stuff. Sometimes there's something that you want to say, but you're keeping it inside. You're holding on to something which has to pass out of your system. So you may also want to analyze the emotional part of your journey if you have fissures that constantly happen. But if you have fissures, in most cases, it takes about three to six weeks to heal completely. The body does the job of healing your fissures if you give it the right environment, the right foods, the right rest, the right amount of activity. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.